time. <coughs> Hi, sir. Miriam's on leave to show them the snazzy new cup. <laughs> True. <laughs> Let me be a bit quick with Are you going to transfer the tea? Yeah. <laughs> because I could have probably put the filter on top of this. Think about it. Would it not fall in? No, I don't think so. I think it's wide enough to catch on it. Afternoon, Gemma. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sue. Could you put the backlight on, please? Put the backlight on. I'm filming this as a YouTube video, so we want optimal lighting. I don't need the noise though. Yeah. You got a side cooker? Um, hi Miriam. Miriam, we've got something to show you. Go on then, go on outside. Coco. She's been doing that all day. Right, off you go then. Off you go. Hi Jan. Hi Alison. Uh, oh, which cup? This one or that one? This one probably is. Yes. Um, I'm just going to transfer my tea. Yeah, it sits on top. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Miriam, look at that. Hang on. So I now need to tell my cup what I've put in it. <coughs> so let me find the app to my, my cup. Hi, Anita. Um, yes, it's that cup. I'm feeling better, Karen. Just tired. Um, let's do that later. Um, going to go with well, it's sort of a green tea. It, it's not a black tea. Um, so I've now Wait, selected it different optimal temperatures. It has optimal temp different optimal temperatures for different teas. So this one's slightly warmer. So uh, no more will I need to dunk my um, thermometer into the teacup, Miriam. Um, my app tells me exactly how hot my coffee or tea is and will keep it at that temperature. So currently it's at 65 and a half degrees. The optimal temperature for tea, it's telling me green tea is 59 degrees. And it has a little light on the bottom. So when it's on its stand, there's a little stand here. There you go, you see that. And you can't see, but there's elements underneath it. And it's going to keep the tea or whichever hot beverage of my choice, it's going to keep it to its optimal temperature. Hi, Lisa. Um, right, Coco, if you go out, you're going to stay out for a few minutes now, okay? Off you go. Mm -hmm. Right, there we go. <coughs> so we can chat for as long as you want now, Miriam. My tea will never go cold. Okay, I mean, I can make it go cold by turning it down on my phone. You know, 
Um, yes. Completely unnecessary and yet totally amazing. Um, has he? Have I frozen? Have I frozen? I mean, I'm pretty cold. Uh, just got in. But we've got no Wi Fi warnings and nothing on the screen to show me that we're a bit fuzzy. Are we all right? On it here? looks fine online. Okay. Um, yeah, Ninja Kettles are great as well. Hello, Linda. Good to see who it was. Uh, yes, Ninja Kettles are great as well, actually. Um, they are, again, perfect for different um, brewing temperatures. Uh, I'm like one of those old people that gets excited about new technology. That's because I am one of those old people that gets excited about new technology and confused occasionally. Um, however, this was easy. This was plug in and play. This was this was go for it. Um, so, uh, actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the tea. What's he doing? I don't know. Probably found some wrapping paper. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. Right. So my tea is steeped for long enough. Actually, you can set the tea timer as well on the app, so you can tell it how long you want it to um, steep for. Um, right, there you go. Great question, uh, Alison. Anyone noticed a shortage of unsweetened almond milk in Lidl and Tesco? I'll say no, because uh, generally don't, we wouldn't buy it from uh, Lidl anyway, um, because it, um, well, the last time I checked it, and I can't say for sure because I haven't been in there today, but the Lidl um, unsweetened almond milk contains maltodextrin. So does the Aldi version as well. Tesco's. I picked it up today. It's one of the um, the products that if you if you were gonna if you were in Tesco's, you're pretty safe to get it from there. Tesco's, Morrison's, believe it or not, Asda also do a clean uh, version of almond milk. I think it's the only thing I'd ever get from Asda. Um, I noticed the change of word from whole to best value. Uh, he wasn't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Oh, all right. What, what was this supposed to be? I must have used the word hall. Hall, right, okay. Well, you, you, that first time I said that, you were like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, what's that? And we're not American. Guess who typed um, on the video? Yeah, guess guess who typed in the description. So, actually, yes, I've been to um, Tesco's, Morrison's and Aldi this afternoon just to, to get some bits that either, A, if you're just starting, you might be looking for these things, or B, that these are things that we use on a daily basis. So there's some things here that I wouldn't normally get, um, there's some things here that I've never seen before in a supermarket. Um, and I picked them up just to sort of have a look at them because they've got the word keto on them. Um, and there's some things that we, they're just our general day to day, regular food items. So almond milk is something that we do get quite regularly. Ella uses it a lot in what your pancakes. Yeah. Pancakes, lava cake. <laughs> I don't tend to use it at all. Um, but yeah, if you're using like, you know, if you're making pancakes, um, you can use almond milk. I tend to use, if I'm doing pancakes, I, I water down some cream. That's that's my way of doing it. We've always got cream in the in the fridge. Um, you do have to be careful with um, almond milk because a lot of the shop, the own branded stuff, and I'm, and I'm talking mostly about Aldi and Lidl's here. They had, and I'm, I'm pretty more pretty confident to say they still have got maltodextrin in as an ingredient. Um, Tesco's, it, it's dead easy, just read the label, it'll be the fourth thing on the label, so it'll be after, uh, hopefully it'll be after almonds. Almonds are quite low when you, as in the volume that goes in, it's about 2%, no more. Uh, water's the first ingredient. I'm going to let Coco back in now because she's whining at the door. Right, come on. Okay. <laughs> yes so i mean obviously plenish is uh, you get you get more almond for your milk uh or your buck there with um uh the plenish uh milk it is um i think it's probably closer to four percent it's not it's not huge you can make your own almond milk i mean it is possible you just you just need a good uh, food uh, uh, jug blender so you know ninja does a good one but you can't find others and you just strain it 
just strain it through uh, cheesecloth. You got your own oil. You see, so you can do it if you want. If you if and you can increase the the amount of almond you want in there as well. You don't want it too thick. Um, but you know that's the if you use it a lot, then there's no reason why you you shouldn't actually make your own. There's not really an awful lot of faff involved. I know some people do like faff, but really it's blitz almonds in water, add some salt, um, and that's it done. Um, and as long as you give it a quick shake before you, because uh, it will settle. I mean, that's the, these have got emulsifiers in them to prevent them from settling. Um, but you you don't need it. So almond milk is something, generally it's a pound, pound 50 for a litre. Um, Morrison's tend to have more of the deals on theirs. Usually, I didn't see it today, I didn't look for it. So, But it's about a pound a litre. Um, and I say, you just need to be aware of what the, the ingredients that's in there. Maltodextrin, it's one of those alternative sweeteners. They add it into pretty much, I mean, it's in a lot of stuff, but a bit like dextrose. Um, it's it's injected or added into as an ingredient. It can cause um, insulin spikes. So you have to be careful. Um, not everyone will suffer from it. Um, you think that it's uh, you know a, a, a low carb product, whatever it is, but then maltodextrin can cause issues, especially if you are sensitive. So, you know, if you're diabetic, then potentially it's going to cause you an issue. Um, Coco, what are you doing? I think she's still hungry. Bear, bear with me a second. She's not eating all day. Now she's, she's decided she, she wants one meal a day. She wants home. She's been acting like this all day, though. Even when she wasn't eating. I don't know. Oh, more accurately, she was mad because I didn't have any eggs to give her. <coughs> um, these are beef tendons. So I get these from Wing Yips from the Chinese supermarket. I've roasted them off. They're... There's a little bit of meat, but they're mostly fat, and she's very interested in this. There you go. There you go. Right, Argy, there you go. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. If you're very wingy, get your, get your dog some treats. Um, beef tendons, a couple of pound a kilo. They love them. I'll hopefully keep them quiet for a few minutes. Right, okay. So also in Tesco's, and I've not seen this before, uh, I have complained. I mean, not as if anyone would ever pay any attention to me complaining, but most of the packets of ground almonds in supermarkets are tiny. You know, Aldi's Lidl's, they're all about 150, 200 grams. You occasionally get slightly bigger ones. I think uh, the Whit Whitworth's brand, slightly bigger. However, this is a half a kilo. Yeah, 500 grams. Never seen one in a supermarket that size, which means it's a little bit cheaper per kilo. You know, so if you are buying a fair amount of ground almonds, <coughs> excuse me, then you are better buying it in a bigger pack. You know, so half a kilo, it works out about just over eleven pound a kilo. So you know, but if you're buying lots of small packets, you're paying at least thirteen pound a kilo. So what's gone up in price? Gemma? Probably the grown almonds. She's saying she's been buying it for the oh, last six months. Right. I've never seen these. Although, I, again, there's a lot of things that I haven't gone into supermarket to look for um, purely because we buy it sort of in bigger bulk for the bakery. So, I, you know, we, we sort of get uh, ground almonds in, in boxes of 10 kilo boxes or 12 kilo boxes. Um, so this is an option. This is definitely an option. Um, now, does it matter if you use almond flour or ground almonds? Generally, no, but you'll pay an awful lot more for almond flour because it's a, it's a heavier process. Um, so you can get almond flour. You can get it from, um, well, generally, you won't get it from a supermarket. You'll generally get it from, you know, online. Not even um, uh, buy Whole Foods online do uh, almond flour. I think they used to, but they don't do it anymore. Um, there's no significant difference when you're using it in baking. I'll be honest, we've, we've been using ground almonds for five years in pretty much everything that we use for baking. All of our cakes, um, all the slabs, they're all made with ground almonds. Um, you know, it's a, as long as you, you know, if you want to make it a little bit finer, then blitz it. You can't do it for too long um, because it will go solid again. Um, yeah, almond flour, um, it, it tends to be an American sort of recipe or ingredient. Um, just... You know, if you want it, then, you know, again, as I said, you'll find it on Amazon. It's going to be more expensive, um, you know, but the, the actual benefit of having almond flour compared to ground almonds, I wouldn't even think there's any 
at all. Hi, Joe. Hi, Moira. Uh, do you know what? I've, I think I've only ever bought one thing off Grape Tree. Uh, I can't remember what it was now. But I have seen that obviously uh, that brand uh, quite a lot uh, for their sort of their products. So again, no different to uh, say, oh, that was him. <coughs> he's finished his bone or knuckle, and he's gone to have a look at hers. <coughs> I'm gonna have a drink because I've got a tickly throat. <laughs> Is your tea still <laughs> still five degrees? Miriam. Mmm. <laughs> oh wow, that is perfect temperature. What is that? Um, uh, fifty nine degrees. Look at that, Miriam. It's going to stay there now for the next hour. Fifty nine degrees. So, Lisa, that might be because almond flour will tend to be an American brand. So they'll include in their carb value the fibres. So it's it might might be something different because it. Does there are but well, you've you've seen this with when you did that database with. Um, there are, there are certain things where everyone agrees, and yes. there are others where no one can come to even in the same store. <laughs> yeah. It's like um, pistachios. There are five different numbers. So this says that the ground almonds from from uh, Tesco's is six point nine grams of carbs per hundred grams. Mm. It can be as as high as nine. That's what I've found across most. Yeah, things. you will find that you'll find the variances. Now, it, I don't know how accurate these things are. Whenever we get some a product tested, it's using the same ingredients. So whether the the actual almonds change during the year, whether they get these tested, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've challenged um, actually one of those companies. I won't out them, but I challenged them um, about one of their products, um, and I challenged them about the nutritional value of one of their products. I, I just it, it just didn't make any sense to me. And after a couple of email conversations and then uh, questioning whether I knew what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've had it tested. Uh, and I, I, I actually sort of said to him, I've actually had your product tested and I know, I know that it's wrong. Um, they then came back with an apology that their supplier had given them the wrong information. Um, so, do you know what? I don't know how accurate these things are. It's only if you send things away for nutritional testing, which we're not going to do. No, you know, no one in the right mind is going to go and test everything that you you, you buy. Um, it's a so you have to take it as it's in and around. Ground almonds are in and around seven to maybe ten grams of carbs per hundred grams. No, I didn't get any compensation, Gemma. <laughs> we got the satisfaction of seeing the number change. I got a satisfaction of an email going, um, <laughs> I'm eating humble pie. I'm eating humble pie. <laughs> and that was it. I was like, it's fine. Um, I'll just see if there's anything. I'm such a dark what? Dork. <laughs> Does that say dork? Use, use your glasses. That's an O. All right. Right. Anyway, ground almonds, um, bigger packs. You know what? It's it, it's the best value I think you're going to find in any of the supermarkets. The shop I work in does brown almonds, hundred grand bags, and that's more than four cows. Yeah, again, it makes no sense how one thing, i.e., almonds. I mean, it, you know, it probably depends as to where in the where in the world they come from. There will be differences. Um, you know, again, an almond isn't an almond because it it, it depends as to where it's probably grown. So. Uh, almonds are uh, so yes. I know Costco do like the like one or two kilo bags, aren't they? I don't know what the nut nutritional values of them, but and you have to be careful to make sure it's a UK label on there, not the um, not the American one. Right. Other things from Tesco's. I wouldn't normally buy this sweetener because obviously we use our own. However, if you've got a club card. It's £2.20 for a pack at the moment. So this is quite expensive stuff. And, and any of these sweeteners, so this is the Stevia Erythritol brand, so Natvia, Purevia, and oh, this is Purevia, isn't it? True. Natvia, Purevia, and Truvia. They are generally about, hang on, let's just get this right, two, these are 250s. They're about 16 to £18 pounds a kilo. When you buy them in small bags like this, that's what it equates to. This is working out at... 
just under ten pound a kilo. Now it's nine pound a kilo. Actually, thinking about it, so it's about nine on offer with a club card. It's about nine pound a kilo. So if you're going to buy one, then buy two because if, essentially at the moment they say it's, it's about half price. Um, I would always just look for the for the yellow label, whichever one is reduced. Um, Natvia was always the one that when it first came out was the one that was always generally reduced. Oh, I, I've not seen the Candarel one in recently. Although yes. Morrison's were the only ones that were stocking that. So the Candarel is a sucralose and stevia blend with erythritol. So it's not quite the same. Right. Okay. So if someone's looking for it, just a, the one a stevia with the erythritol, erythritol. It's just those yeah. three. Um, Pure Via and slash Whole Earth, which is what they used to be, they are also the ones in Starbucks that come in the little sachets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, if you're looking, again, this is purely on the basis that if you're just starting out or if you're looking for what's out of the shops right now, Tesco's have got that on offer as long as you've got a club card. So, you know, it's they're all pretty much the same in the sweeteners. Um, you, you just have to try and avoid paying full price for those things because 18 pound a kilo for sweetener is is a lot. Yeah, so the Candarel one is the one that came out a couple of years ago and actually um, was always the best value. I think you can get it for 265 same sort of size pack. Do not to sell the uh, powder sugar. Yeah, so this range now, they do a full, they do, I mean, go back three or four years, that's all they had, just the white sweetener. Whereas now they've got the golden sweetener, they've got the um, unpowdered sweeteners as well. Powdered have probably got something added to them. I forget so what they add. In the Stephen Erythritol brands, the powdered one usually is just erythritol with a bit of starch in. Right. To sort of make it act like icing sugar. And then the <coughs> brown one is, uh, I think, maybe 4% molasses. Molasses, yeah. So again, um, Tesco's have the broader range of the sweetness. So you'll, buy, you, you'll find the brown and the powdered there. Um, in fact, the sweetener range, uh, the, the one the Tesco's that I went to, they had xylitol, they had the icing version, they had the demerara version, they had the, the, the standard white version. So, um, But it's only this one that was on offer. All of the rest, you're looking at 18, 20 pound a kilo. Um, um, Sandra's asked, how much was that Tesco and Grand Norman bag? Um, about, well, it worked, it, it was 11 pound a kilo, so it would be about 5 pound 50 for a 500 gram bag. The oh, the receipt's there. there. Yeah, sorry, I did keep the receipts. Um, <clears throat> 5 pound 75, 5.75. So again, it's, it's sort of, like I say, it's the best value one you're going to find. Um, the other thing that we tend to get, I'm not saying this is um, this, this is cheap, because it's not. It's clean. As I say, maltodextrin is added, or dextrose is added to most of the meats and, uh, and prepared sort of foods. This one doesn't have anything in it at all. It's got nitrates in it, as they will with any of the, the processed meats. Um, but other than that, no sugar, no sweetener, no nothing. However, it is about, I think it's about £15 a kilo. So do you know what, to, um, to fit it with the theme of the video being best value, three, that's obviously uh, eight, the niche where it's like no sweeteners or whatever. Yeah. But the better value version of it is to get the gammon gammon joint that we do. So so here's what we do. So I've uh, just, just worked out that this packet here was £3. Uh, essentially, it's only 125 grams, which means it's 24 pounds a kilo. That's a huge amount of money to pay for for something that is fairly easily replicated at home. Buy yourself a gammon joint or a ham joint. Uh, you have to again. You do have to be a little bit careful that a lot of the gammon joints again are, are injected with dextrose. Um, so have a look at the labels. You will, you will find clean out there, or go and see your butcher. Go and see a butcher. If you're going to pay £24 a kilo for ham, sliced ham, you can go go to your butcher and say, what ham have you got that's not been, not been sort of tampered with at all? And just boil it. You only have to boil it for a couple of hours, and then you'll shred it, just like any shredded meat, you know, pork, anything like that. Um, it's much better value than doing it this way. I, you know, I know that, Louis, that won't last more than two sandwiches for Louis, if I'm lucky, if I'm absolutely lucky. Yeah, I can buy a small joint for that three pounds and he'll get several days out of it. So it's an option. It's just not a, it's not one that I would recommend doing often. It's something that if you're going to have, 
you know, if you really sort of caught short and you want a, a, a clean sandwich, salad, whatever, that's the sort of stuff to go for. I love this because Gemma's asking, like, the teacher questions when you submit an essay. <laughs> yes, I know. And then you get the annotations to expand further. <laughs> so I don't want to go too much into that right now because it, it'll, it potentially gets confusing, but clean keto is something that predominantly you're going to do, do from home, i.e. you're buying your own whole pieces of protein, pieces of chicken, you know, minced beef, minced, minced pork, uh, pieces of, of lamb, whatever it is, and you're doing the processing. You're doing the sort of like the cooking and any of the, you're creating the sauces. You'll never tend, you'll never really be able to eat fully clean out because they're always going to be using things like um, uh, processed oils. So if you want to follow a clean keto lifestyle, it's not just about bringing those carbs down to, you know, 20, 30, 40 grams, whatever it is. It's also about removing some of the things that we know can cause inflammation, like the processed oils, like the the, the dextrose, the, the, the added sugars that are in pretty much everything. So clean, to me, involves preparing pretty much everything at home. And we sort of tend to live our life maybe 90% clean. You know, generally, I wouldn't be buying some of the stuff that's here today. In fact, one of them, pork scratchings, I would have, when I first started, that was something that I would eat. That's definitely low carb. Absolutely, 100% low carb. It's not clean keto because of the ingredients that are in there. So now, rather than me have these as a snack, I would make my own. So I can make my own clean pork scratchings. It takes more effort. Or if you're just starting out, that's, you know, that's an alternative. So it's the difference between taking all of the inflammatories out. So the, 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 the sort of processed oils and the, the, um, uh, the, the additives, taking all of that out and actually sort of following a slightly cleaner sort of, you know, creating the same product, just without all of the, uh, all of the, the, the add-ons. Um, I just picked these up because I'm, I'm, I'm going to do them tomorrow. I'm just going to cook them tomorrow. So it's just chicken wings. But they, this is an ideal, you know, we were talking about proteins last night. You know, these are a protein, um, protein fat combination. You know, I worked out last night that um, a chicken leg, so obviously it's the same, you know, uh, portion of meat and, and skin. Chicken leg, 200 grams of, of chicken leg uh, is about, uh 40 grams of protein and about 20 grams of fat it'll be the same for for uh, chicken wings because essentially it's the same meat um so this is what i would use as a snack if i'm gonna do something you know even you know i know that pork scratchings take longer to make you know they're, they're one of the sort of like most involved things you've got to trim the pork down if you can get hold of the pork skin you've got to boil it you're then going to fry it. it takes a little while however a packet of chicken wings which costs a, a couple of pounds if you're lucky, um, you know, with a few spices on top and, you know, and grilled so crispy, that's the perfect snack. So I'll just pick those, those up just purely because I'm going to be cooking them tomorrow. Um, uh, so just the, just one point on the, um, the, the pork scratchings that we make, they are very limited, and right now they're not available because we haven't got any pork in. Um, we're in that middle part where we've obviously used everything and sent everything out that we've made, and we'll go start making sort of all fresh again next week. Pork scratchings, they take a long time to make, and we, we don't use a huge amount of pork. Um, so, you know, we only have uh, so many joints per week when we're making the sausages, sausage rolls, those sorts of things. So yes, keep an eye on port scratchings. However, um, if you ever see them available, I'd recommend you just get them there and then because that it's every couple of weeks we get enough to sort of be able to produce a small batch. I've put the link in because when something's out of stock, like the port scratchings are at the moment, yeah. they instead of the buy now button, um, you'll see a button that says email me when available. If you pop your email in there, you'll get notified as soon as the inventory. As, as soon as we make them, we input the inventory on the website and as soon as it is inputted you'll get an email saying they're now back available do they keep are we on about the port scratchings jan so the homemade port scratchings will keep for a short period they won't keep for months like this again the reason why these keep for months and months is because they've got a huge amount of additives inside them 
our port scratchings have salt. That's it. So they'll keep for, and they come in a, an airtight container, um, but they'll keep for a couple of weeks. That's it. Otherwise, they'll just have to go soft, you know, and you want crunchy port scratching. So the difference between what we do and what's here is that we eliminate as many of those preservatives, additives as possible. It's fresh. It's as fresh as it can be before we send it out to you which means it's got a very short shelf life. But that's no different to when you cook food at home. You know, you don't add additives, you don't add preservatives to your food at home generally. If I'm cooking these chicken wings, I'm going to cook them to eat them in the next couple of days. I'm not going to cook them and then try and sort of dip them in something or cover them in something to keep them um, from going off. Um, right, okay, so that's the tesco's bit i didn't pick up huge amounts but you know i spent 25 30 minutes on tesco so that's four products um morrison's oh I, actually no was that oh was this tesco's or was this morrison's i think this is tesco's i think this is tesco's hang on i was looking for other bits and pieces yeah sauerkraut tesco's so chicken ground almond sauerkraut almond drink lard lard you'll get lard pretty much everywhere and anywhere the general supermarkets um, it's the it's the cheapest fat you will be able to use, you know. So I've also picked up some cooking coconut oil from Morrison's. This is forty two pence um, a block, which makes it one pound sixty a kilo. This uh, uh, is it five hundred grams. Have a look, have a look, look. six fifty, and it was. £3.25. It's going to be closer to, what, just over £5 a kilo? So £1.60, £5 a kilo. They're both solid, saturated fats. They're both great for frying with. Um, it, you know, if you you can get this, Asda, Morrison's, Tesco's, Aldi, Lidl's. It's all, they're all about the same price, 42 pence for a 250-gram block. Believe me, if you're doing a lot of cooking at home, this is great. This is fantastic. Um, however, I appreciate not everybody likes lard. Could this co this the cooking coconut oil is the one that doesn't can have any of the, uh, the smell or the taste. So this is this is plain. It's a, again very similar to lard. Um, there's no real taste to it, um, and it is the cheaper of the cook the coconut oils as well. The organic one will be a little bit more expensive. So um, so lard get from anywhere. Use it. You know, it's great. We make pastry with it, um, frying. You know, if you're doing any form of deep frying, you want to be using lard. Uh, the sauerkraut, I just, I like this sort of thing. I would generally make my own. This is, again, it's the transition between what I, what would I have done five years ago and what do I do now? Well, I've got in the cupboard behind me now pickled eggs, pickled cabbage. I haven't got any sauerkraut at the moment, but I tend to do my own now rather than buy it. But this one was clean. You know, a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of the main brands, I, I don't know this brand at all, uh, but a lot of the main brands will contain sugar as one of the initial ingredients. It's usually three or four, you know, number three or four on the list. Um, completely clean. This is cabbage, water, salt. Done. Perfect. So it's an ideal little side. Um, I like that uh, if I'm having a, you know, salmon salad or something like that. Um, that's... Tesco's done. Am I finding Morrison's getting too dear? I'm finding Morrison's um, are changing their um, their supply so that they, they the, the, the stocks that they have on the shelves. Um, I went, the one that I went to isn't one of the best ones. So we've got two or three local. Uh, I didn't go to, to Kettering. I went. I was in Wellingborough. And they, my issue with the Wellingborough, and I've mentioned this previously, is that they have reduced the uh, the, the, the fresh meat selection. So the, the actual aisle has been reduced down to one side of a fridge bay, and that's it. Just just one one aisle, or you know, half an aisle effectively. So I went in there looking for because Morrison's are usually pretty good for offal. You know, you can get uh, generally um, uh, lamb's liver. Um, chicken livers, uh, kidney. Um, I've, I, I actually got some um, kidney from um, the, the Kettering uh, Morrison's. So I think it depends as to which one you're going to. 
because the Kettering one hasn't changed its supply, it's still got a good stock of fresh meat. Whereas the Wellingborough one is very much, it's just been reduced and it's been replaced by lots of processed food. So in that same aisle, usually you have two different aisles, don't you? You have the meat aisle, real meat, and then you have the processed meat aisle. Well, this one's got the aisles combined. Um, and it just, I went in there and I was really struggling, really, really struggling to pick up anything out of that Morrison's. However, I did find a couple of things. I have got to be quick, haven't I? Because I've got PT in 20 minutes. Yeah. Hang on. Miriam. Oh, wow. Oh, 59 degrees. Do you know what? Look at that. 59 degrees. It's just, it tastes like it's just been brewed. I've never seen coconut oil in a block, Alison. I'd love to know where you get that from. I'll try and find out. Um, right, Morrison's. I say I was really struggling. Uh, other than the coconut oil, and they used to do this in bigger containers. They used to do this in one kilo containers. And yes, it was a fiver for the containers. I haven't seen them for a couple of years now. Uh, yeah, Morrison's. I, I couldn't see coconut flour anywhere today. Um, I'll give you a hint as to where you can get your coconut flour from, though, Linda. <laughs> yeah? Key to Roma. Um, it is the same flour that the supermarkets sell. Okay? So the brand that you would normally have bought, I won't mention the brand, but the brand that you would have normally bought from the supermarket in that blue bag, um, we get the same coconut flour from the, from the, the wholesaler. Um yeah, I don't know why it's not available. Uh, none of the, well, I only ever got it from Morrison's or Tesco's. Neither of them had it in. Whether it's just because they've got a shortage, I've no idea. However, Morrison's, I'm struggling. I found this, and that was it. And then I thought, well, there's nothing else here. And then I walked down the free from aisle. I was looking for things, something like xanthan gum because that's something that is used in a lot of recipes. It's a bit of a weird uh, ingredient, um, so they didn't have any. However, they had these, and obviously it struck my attention because if they've got the word keto on them. So I wanted to. Now we know this company. We invited these to. Um, they do the, the shake. They do the. Um, they do the, the protein powders. That's them. Are you sure it's not another brand that we can? No, because it's it, they've they've got them in Morrison's. Oh God, you can tell how long ago that. Yeah, no, they've, happened, they've, they've got them in Morrison's. Okay. So we know these are clean. Yeah. They're not they're not cheap. They're two pounds a bar. They're little sort of uh, probably 40 gram, 35 gram bars. Same for these. You'll see these online. Um, again, it, it's something that is an option. I'm not saying you need to have these on a keto lifestyle because I've never bought one of these. Um, again, if you're relying on constantly buying little prepackaged um Flora, I have to know the details about why xanthan gum would be available on prescription. What on earth? Hi, Emily. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so these things are, again, they, 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 the contents are clean. They, the ingredients are clean. They're, they're just never going to be cheap, ever, ever. Um, little cereal bar type things. They're available in supermarkets. You do have to be careful. Not everything that has the word keto on it is even close to being keto. So um, can you or whatever else talk about how to use that? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, right. So this one I've never seen before. Um, who said they've got it? Linda's got the porridge. It's a, you know, look at the ingredients. It's chia seeds. It's coconut flour. It's ground almonds. No, sorry, ground linseed, not almonds and hemp hearts and a bit of sweetener um i don't know how many portions are in here i, I will make one one day i'm not really a, a porridgey sort of fan anymore um again it's not cheap it's five pounds for a bag <clears throat> yes it, it's i, 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 I Presume it's no, we're nowhere near as bad over here yet, Emily. However, it is. Uh, I, I was surprised today when I went into that Morrison's to see the for the first time ever a shelf of products with 
keto on them. Now, there were some products there. There was a coffee there. And I, and I looked at it, and it's a, it's a cold a keto coffee. It's instant coffee, Americano, with MCT powder. It's £18 for the jar. What? Yeah. How much is the jar? I, do you know what? I, I think I took a picture of it. I took the picture of the brand. It's not. There's not much in it. About, I get annoyed every time I have to spend a fiver on Kenko. It's, it's about a hundred. It's about a hundred grams. I wouldn't think it's much bigger 100 than a hundred grams. grams. We'll have a look later, and we'll have a. It's, so it's, it's over a hundred pound a kilo. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. I, I get it. You know, it, it's a, it's a premium product. I even think I know where it's come from because we were approached by a company a couple of years ago to actually... Is it the same guy? Yeah, I think it is. No, no, no. I think they, they, they're the distributor. Yeah. The guys that we spoke to with the distributor or the manufacturers, they were then trying to sort of get companies to sell it. And I'm just... It, there are very few people that make these products. It's, it's just not necessary. £18 for a packet of instant coffee with MCT powder isn't necessary. If you want a bulletproof coffee, then make a coffee and get some coconut oil. If you want to get rid of them, okay. yeah. Um, get some coconut oil. Get some um, Get some MCT oil. You can buy MCT oil from, you know, I've got a bottle over there. We've got it on the website. It's, you know, £10 a bottle or something like that. You will get... Um, hang on, they're liters, aren't they? So you get like a no, no, hundred. How many shots do you get out of that? You get a lot. How what? Uh, how uh, five we... mils, so ten. How... Hang on, we've got a bottle of MCT on the website. So... Yeah, just put MCT oil. You can get MCT oil in, in lots of places. Um, it's, it, I get it. It's it may be a, a convenience for somebody to sort of have a spoon of coffee in and and you've got your MCT in there. Mm, but so ours is a five hundred mil bottle. So five hundred mil, right? So you get a hundred portions out of it. Yeah. So a hundred portions for uh, about a tenner. You know, you're not going to get many portions out of a um, out of a hundred gram. So and, and it's got to be good coffee as well. That's the point. I mean, I think I struggle. I think I'd really struggle with that one. Uh, I, I picked it up, I was going to buy it, and I thought, I'll not use it. Why am I doing that? I mean, at least we'll use the sweetener, but I wouldn't have, wouldn't have known before. It. We'll give that a go, and we'll yeah, do a review on it. It's a fiver. Um, but, right, okay, so Morrison's was a bit of a letdown. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in Morrison's for the meat and the fish and those sorts of things. I mean, you all saw the deal that I got yesterday on salmon. Um, you know, I got whole salmon for less than a tenner, uh, and I got several. Um, um, I was just really disappointed with the selection that's at that Morrison's. You know, even when you're looking at the bags of almonds and the bags of seeds, they're all small bags. There's no value in buying small bags. If you're going to do this and you, you're you going to be making, you know, um, uh, breads or cakes or anything like that, then... It's actually worth investing, you know, in the slightly bigger bags because you get a better value for it. Right. Now, the favourite place to go shopping, and this is just for <laughs> Mr. Morrison. How are you doing? Coco? She wants to go back outside again. I did look for pickled gherkins, by the way, Ross. I was looking for them, but none of them were clean. Um, so I left them behind. Right, yeah, so I, I went to Aldi, but I could have easily gone to Lidl's to do, to do this bit of the shopping, because this is the stuff that we use every single day. And this is, if you're looking for, you know, making this into a proper lifestyle, these are the things you're going to probably be introducing, and here's the best value, Aldi and Lidl. Because if you want Greek yogurt or Greek style yogurt, then um, at both Aldi and Lidl have these larger tubs, one kilo tubs. You can get them in slightly smaller as well. Um, Five hundred grams in um, in Aldi, definitely. I don't think Lidl's doing the smaller smaller pots. Can't remember. Probably too. <laughs> yeah. Probably, mate. And I'll tell you something. I didn't have my glasses with me. I was like, oh, for goodness' sake. It was a nightmare trying to go shopping without my glasses on. Um, 
So Greek style yogurt. This is it's really thick. It's really it, it's great. You know, the, again, as we were saying about the almonds, you'll find there's a slight variance in in the carb values on yogurts. It's between four and six gram, grams of carbs per hundred grams. Um, you know, it's more about portion control with yogurt than it is about the actual um, carb content per hundred grams. You know, you can easily eat two 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 to three hundred grams at a time, can't you? Um, you know, doesn't do that anymore. Doesn't do that anymore. Um, so these are effectively about one pound fifty. Same for um, for Lidl's, about one pound fifty a kilo. Um, you will have noticed, maybe or maybe you haven't, but you'll know. A lot, yogurt has gone up a lot recently. Certainly, I know in uh, Tesco's and in um, at Morrison's and in um, Sainsbury's, it's closer to two pound a kilo. Um, if not more, if you buy in the smaller pots as well. Also, review Sainsbury's yogurt tastes like cheese. What their natural? The, the one Greek that, yogurt. Yeah, the Greek style. You know, right. the one in like the rectangular tub. Um, it's, the rectangular. Oh, sorry. The, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, Sue Holdsworth. Not you're not guilty. The other one. Um, the other stuff that we buy quite a lot of, and again, this is predominantly sort of like the, the, the meat, the fish, the dairy. Uh, ricotta, we use this a lot. Um, sauces, mousses, those sorts of things. Uh, sour cream, creme fraiche. I tend to find, and this is Aldi and Lidl, tend to find that they're the best places for consistent supply. Um, often going into um, Tesco's, just because it's on the way in and out from the bakeries. Um, and these things are rarely there, rarely available. So, you know, best 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 value. Um, it's all made with British milk. So, you know, um, either at Lidl's or Aldi's. Same for sort of standard cheese. Um, you know, we go through cheese quite quite quickly in this house, mostly because of Louis. A snack would be most of that. Um, six, six pounds something a kilo. Um, you'll find a lot of the cheese blocks have either reduced in size. They've gone from 500 to 450 and the price has stayed the same. Keep an eye on your kilo price. Uh, that's the best tip to have. When you go shopping, look at the price per kilo, not, not the price of the product itself. Um, then do your comparisons. Um, and chocolate. So again, we know this isn't clean. Um, we know we have our own clean chocolate. We know that there's a, there's a significant difference in price. We also have a Louis. We also have a Louis, yes. <laughs> the, the significant difference is that um, when we make our chocolate, it doesn't come with any of the sugar and it's handmade. This obviously is neither of those. However, it's one of the best quality 85%. Yes, uh, what is the carb values on these? Because these come in little... Most 85% are between 18 and 22 carbs per 100. Yeah, so this is 18. And obviously these come in little handy 25 gram blocks. Um, you know, so they are less than a couple of pound for 100 grams of chocolate. So, and their portion size. So they're ideal. As I said, this is something that when I first started, it'd be something that I would buy on a very, very regular basis. You know, if ever I was in Aldi um, and I'd see these, usually a pound, um, and they were today, this would be my choice of snack. However, the list of ingredients is now something that I wouldn't. And I, when I've had this, I haven't had one this year, I don't think, probably the previous year. But when I last had them, I didn't feel great after eating them. Um, and here's why. So first two ingredients, port rind and salt, that's fine. Then we go into the preservatives. So monosodium glutamate, hydrolyzed soya protein, wheat flour, wheat flour, um, and dextrose. None of those I eat on a normal day-to-day -day basis. So that's why I stopped having these and started to either make my own or switch to a diff different crunchy thing, which would be chicken thighs or chicken, chicken wings. Um, I've literally got a couple of minutes because so, we've got PT uh, at six o'clock. Oh, do you use ricotta more than mascarpone? I would say as a household, yes. So I, so um, when I buy ricotta and mascarpone, I'll always buy four or five ricottas and maybe one or two mascarpone. However, personally, I use more mascarpone. Ella uses more ricotta. So it's the difference between the fat levels. 
you know, the, the, the protein levels, we're not eating ricotta or mascarpone for protein levels. We're eating it because it's we're making desserts out of it. Um, but I would tend to go for the heavier um, dairy and Ella goes for the lighter dairy. I'll pop a link into the ricotta mousse recipe because that's really well by ricotta really, isn't it? I mean, we use it, um, there's the... Uh, Still 59 degrees? Stuffed peppers, you know, or the lasagna, which it makes mm. a nice cheese sauce. Yeah. Um, but the main use of ricotta in this house is... Is ricotta mousse. mousse. Yeah. So look at that. The perfect cup of tea that's lasted me 55 minutes and every sip was at 59 degrees. Sensational. If you haven't got one, you're going you're gonna to want one now, aren't you? Coco wants one. <laughs> right. Anyway, if there are any questions, please, you've got like three minutes before we go. Um, hopefully that's been useful. I will try and do, I mean, I have tried Asda. I honestly, seriously have tried to go to Asda and um, buy something. Uh, I'm not sure I came out. From, I don't know where it came from. It came from, it was a gift, Sandra. So I don't know where it came from and I haven't looked to uh, to see uh, where you get them from um someone had a question earlier about if you had to choose one choose one what one yeah, child yeah, yeah. So if i had to choose one child it would be rg every day of the week the other three they're like that okay sorry if you had to choose just one store which you could shop at which would be i shop at, I shop at asda I know you're not <laughs> yeah sorry lisa um it it would be um uh, Aldi, because I pretty much can get everything that I want to get from there. Um, you know, the fruit, the veggies, the, the meat, the fish, you know, generally um, you can get from anywhere, but things like the ricotta, the, the yogurt, the, the other dairy, the cheeses, because they always have a good selection of cheeses as well. The coffee, um, you know, what? they didn't have any in today. They didn't have any in it. There has been a shortage. Uh, however, and I've only got the beans right now. What's up the cocoa? She's just being a little... She wants a cuddle. Um, I've only got the beans, so I need to grind them. But if you're, if you're a coffee fan, and most of us are, the number four um, coffee is, is fantastic. So that's, you know, that sells it for me, really. I can get my coffee from there, uh, along with all of the other essentials um occasionally you'll get and this is why i tend to go to morrison sometimes for me because okay occ only occasionally you will get things like liver from aldi is there a better brand of cacao do you know what um what a cocoa powder or cacao For those that are wondering if Coco's getting neglected, I've tried to stroke her and she keeps walking away. So she just wants to be dramatic and stand in the middle of the room, half asleep. Come here. Come here. Right, so cocoa powder? Because cacao, AO, is a raw, more bitter, more expensive version. Yeah less processed cocoa oa is a nicer tasting usually used in baking um powder uh i don't think we re well we very rarely use cacao unless we, we very very rarely use cacao process. yeah i was gonna say the only time we've used cacao really is the raw cacao so i think there is only more cacao oh right so if you're making chocolate cacao is cocoa right okay Maybe, I don't know. um do you know what? Again, we if we if I'm buying cocoa powder, um, it's generally come from Aldi. Uh, they do it in those red tubs. Um, that's fantastic. We have our own now, so and it's it's slightly is it slightly redder ours? Yeah, so it varies across brands. Because uh, um, I know the little one because we didn't realise that cocoa comes in different colours almost. It's not brown. It's red most of it. Uh, or black. Like okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, she just wants fussing. That's what that's all I'm doing down the there. The one at the bakery, compared to Bourneville, it's darker in colour. Yeah. 
I think compared to Aldi and Lidl, it's very similar. I think Aldi and Lidl is the closest to the one that we use in the bakery. <laughs> Don't be silly, she's got selective hearing. She yeah, she doesn't hear thing. that. She, she knows when we're talking about cocoa powder and cocoa. Don't you? She can she's, hear the she's, silent she's, she's now sat down. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah, she's not unwell. She's just not been not been eating well. Certainly not today anyway. She ate well yesterday. Oh, no. She's eaten well since I've got home. I'll tell you that. Because you fed her beef tenders. I've, I've fed her chicken... No, I've fed her turkey intestines and um, beef tendons. Have I? Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, thank you, Emma. We've, yes, we've got to go. Four minutes before PT. Um, I don't know what we're doing. We. It, it feels like it's one of the it's one of those weird days, isn't it? It doesn't feel like a Thursday. It feels like it should be a Friday or a Tuesday. I don't know. Um, right. Thank you very much for joining in. There's been loads of you this afternoon. Um, we'll be back. Uh, are we back tomorrow? Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Doing? Kitchen gadgets. Oh, blimey. Kitchen gadgets. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh my life, kitchen gadgets. I hope no one's going anywhere for like tomorrow. My new kitchen gadget keeps me keeps me occupied. You'll see it again tomorrow. Um I will I'll see you in PT in three minutes. All right, see you in a bit.